If you've been looking at getting into game development, but you're not sure what hardware you need, then this video is going to be perfect for you. Today, I'm going to cover what the minimum specs are that you're going to need as a game developer. And I'll also talk about some of the things that you should consider upgrading if you're making a purchase now. If that sounds interesting, make sure that you hit the like and subscribe button. And if you have some comments or thoughts on the stuff that I recommend or questions about stuff that maybe I didn't cover, drop them down below and I'll try to answer all of them for you. The first thing that I want to talk about is laptops versus desktops, because this is probably the first place that people look and it's probably the biggest decision that you're going to make. There are a lot of trade-offs when you go to a laptop, but there are also some big benefits. Now, personally, I do my development on both types of systems. Right now, I'm working and recording on a desktop system. I find that recording works a lot better. And a lot of the high definition stuff that I end up doing, if it's in the HDRP setup, where I really need ray tracing and advanced graphics, I find that doing that on my desktop system works best. But most of the time, I do my development on a laptop. I sit either at my desk or on a bed, and I just type away and do the stuff that I need to do because the majority of what I'm doing is writing code. We're writing code and a little bit of running code. And as long as the project's not too big, I don't need a giant powerful system like I've got here to run it. But before we get to the details, I want to share an exciting opportunity from this video sponsor, Backtrace. Next week, starting December 9th, Backtrace is hosting their fifth game jam. As usual, this will be a 48-hour game jam, but this time you can win a PlayStation 5, all while utilizing their amazing free debugging platform and building your game. For those of you who don't already know, Backtrace is a debugging platform that helps you improve game quality by automating error capture. It lets you capture errors from all instances of your game and then generates structured, searchable error reports from your data. And with their web console, it's extremely easy to analyze, monitor, and debug your games across all platforms. The best thing is that Backtrace's developer plan is completely free and lets you manage up to 25,000 errors a month. So go join the jam by clicking the link in the description and check out Backtrace to start optimizing your error capture workflow. So let's break down the differences or the pros and cons of each of the types of systems that you can use. With a desktop, you're going to get lots of power for a relatively low price. You also don't have the ability to move it around and you're going to need to get a couple other things like a monitor, a mouse, and a keyboard. Although with a laptop, I'd still recommend you at the very least get a mouse because you probably don't want to be using a trackpad too often. Although most of the time when I use my laptop, to be honest, I do use the trackpad because I'm not playing games on them. I'm just writing a lot of code, but occasionally I still need to plug in a mouse. Now that we kind of talked about the differences between laptops and desktops, although you probably already knew those, let's talk about the actual specs that I recommend. The first thing and probably the most important thing or the first thing I look at when choosing a system is the RAM. And I would recommend that you start with at least 16 gigs of RAM. 32 is great, 16 is perfectly fine. And if you can get 12 and that's it, then you're okay. And eight is kind of the bare minimum. If you're going below eight, you're probably gonna really struggle. Even at eight, it's gonna be difficult and slow. So I would recommend at least 16 gigs of RAM as, if possible. And if that's something that you can trade up on and get 16, you're good. You don't really necessarily need to go above 16 to 32 or 24, though it does help if you're loading up bigger projects or multiple projects. Find that one game fits perfectly fine in 16 gigs of RAM for the most part. And of course, you know your game better than I do. You can probably load your game up, but if you're just getting into it and it's brand new, then 16 is a good solid number to go with. Now, you don't really care about if it's DDR3, DDR4, or DDR5. It's going to be specific to the system that you get, and that's more tied into the processor that you're going to get. The speed of the RAM isn't going to make a huge difference here. We'll talk about processors in a second, though, because next I want to talk about what I think is the second most important thing, and that's the storage on your device. You've got a couple options when it comes to storage. You can get an old traditional hard drive. Those are the kind with the spinning magnetic platters, and that's what used to be really common and is still in a lot of desktop systems. Most laptops, though, have switched over to solid-state drives, and in fact, most kind of mid-to-high-end um, 
I'd say desktops have as well. And I would highly recommend that you go with a solid state drive in whatever system that you're using. Now, the minimum I would go with is a 256 gig SSD, but I would generally recommend going up to a 512 or one terabyte SSD so that you have lots of room to store art, store game projects and other things without running out of space. It really sucks when you run out of space, but it is one of the few things that's very easy to upgrade. 95% of the time. There are a couple laptops where upgrading the hard drive is difficult, but for the most part, upgrading the hard drive is almost always going to be the probably the easiest thing that you can upgrade, other than sometimes it's easier to upgrade RAM depending on systems. But a hard drive is usually the one that is almost always available as an upgrade. But I'd still recommend a solid state drive of at least 256 gigs, ideally up to a terabyte. And the reason for the solid state drive is pretty simple. It's drastically faster. We're talking orders of magnitude faster. It's going to be, you know, your load up time for Windows is going to drop way less than in half, but your startup time and load time for your projects in your games is going to plummet because accessing all of the files required for your game or all of the files that build up your game is slow, especially when you get to thousands or tens of thousands of files. So having a solid state drive will make it dramatically faster. I, I can't I don't know, emphasize this enough. Once you have enough RAM, solid state drive is definitely the next most important thing. Oh, what else is important though? CPUs. The processor in your system does matter. It doesn't make a huge difference when it comes to building games because most of the time when you're building games, again, you're just typing, you're in a code editor, you're not really beating up that processor. It's only when you're playing the game that you're really hitting the CPU, a little bit when you're compiling, but that's a a minor small portion of what you do nowadays. Most of it's gonna be the, the playing. And if you end up with a CPU that's so powerful that it's way better than everybody else's, you get false positives of it being a great game that plays well anyway. So you don't want it to be super powerful, but I do recommend that you go with something like an i5 or greater, an i5, an i7, or something like that in your laptop. You can get away with an i3 CPU or the AMD equivalent, but I would not recommend going down to like the um, the old school Core 2 level or the, the Celerons or something like that. Go to something that's um, at least an i5, ideally one of the slightly newer ones, although it's not going to make a huge difference. You just want to have something that's somewhat fast, has a little bit of CPU cache. So i3 I will work, i5 is good, 7 or 9, 9 is great of course, or some of the uh, AMD equivalents as well. So there's one other thing that I think, well actually I lied, there are two other things that are very important. I just mentioned AMD and you're probably thinking what about video cards because there's AMD cards or NVIDIA cards available. It, there's also Intel cards available that are using the on, onboard GPU that's kind of built into the processor. All three of those will work okay, depending on the type of game that you want. I would recommend, um, well, let, let's talk about this a little bit. Let, let's pull back and freeze for a second. If you're building a game and you don't really know what the game is, you don't have any specific requirements graphically, you just know that it's going to be a 3D game, then either AMD or an NVIDIA card or an Intel C graphics card will probably work just fine for you. If you're just getting started and you're not going to really try to push the edge or push the boundaries of anything visually, you just want to make some 2D games or you want to make some simple 3D stuff that's not... You know, like I said, not really pushing the edges of game development or even coming close to the edges. If you want to start doing more advanced graphics work, though, then I would recommend that you go with something that has one of NVIDIA or AMD's mobile GPUs. And it doesn't have to be a super high-end GPU, just one of them, either one of those brands on there, and you're probably going to end up just fine. But there's something that I think is even more important if you're a game developer, though. It's very related, and that's the screen resolution. If you end up getting a laptop, which can totally fine option, make sure that the resolution is at least 1920 by 1080. Most people are going to be playing games in that 1080p resolution, the 1920 by 1080, and you want to be able to actually develop and see your game in that resolution. My recommended or preferred is something like 19, 19, uh, 
1920 by 1200, there we go, so that you have a couple extra pixels. You got some room for the bar down below. You can see your game and still have the extra room for toolbars and things in there. But having it at least full screen or at least full resolution, full HD, I think is very important. If you don't have that and you have a laptop that has an external GPU option or an external output like an HDMI cable you can plug in, then just get an external monitor that's at least 1080p because you're going to see a huge difference in your performance if or your workflow if you don't have to scale everything down. I generally recommend a much larger monitor. My ideal and the one that I'm using right now is a 49 inch ultra wide that's 51 something by 1440. I've lost track of my resolutions and my math is failing me right now because I'm looking at too many numbers in front of me. But you get the idea. Nice big resolution is important. I generally like a large single screen with a big resolution over multiple monitors because I find it easier to work with, but either one will work. The last thing that I think that you need to make sure you've got is at least just a couple uh, open USB ports. Super simple to deal with, but some laptops really struggle with this or have like you know, one or two USB ports. I would recommend ideally having more or at least to have a USB hub ready so you can split off because when you're doing game development, you're going to start plugging in a bunch of random devices eventually, controllers and other different types of things. Uh, maybe you won't, but I definitely do. I plug in, I don't know, every port I think on the back of my system is full, plus a couple in the front and a hub. So I, I would say make sure you have at least a couple of ports. So I mentioned at the beginning that I would also give a couple tips on places to get good deals on these things. So if you're looking for laptops, there are a couple things that I would generally do. The first is I always look at slick deals. It's a great place to just find deals on random stuff. It's something I've been using for, I don't know, maybe a decade or more now. And the first thing I'll do is just go search on there, maybe add in a deal alert and let it just email me and notify me if something close to what I want comes up. So if I want a laptop, with you know, 16 gigs of RAM, I'll put in laptop 16 GB and do a search and then maybe do an alert and see if I can find something good there. Another great place though is like Craigslist or the used markets because I find that a lot of people unload their old laptops after they get new ones, especially after the holidays when all the new stuff, you know, everybody got a new laptop and they want to get rid of their three-year-old laptop. The one I'm using is probably like five, six, seven years old, and it works great. So it doesn't have to be a brand new device. As long as it works and it's functional, you can get a really good deal on something used there. The other final bit of, or last place I would recommend is just um, ask around because probably on your social media, your Facebook or whatever other things you use, that you've got a couple friends on there who may have upgraded their stuff and they've got old laptops laying around. I know it's happened to me multiple times and I just, when I find them, I give them away to the first person that I know that needs a laptop. So if you're looking for them, you know, those are the general places that I would recommend looking for them. Now, if you watch this video and you liked it, please hit the thumbs up button. And if you have some advice or thoughts on other things that, like I said, I might have missed in the specs or good ways to get good deals on these things, please drop a comment down below and let me and everybody else know. All right. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Also, don't forget to check out Backtrace and join their game jam that starts next week on December 9th. This is a great opportunity to learn how to use their platform and start automating your debug and crash analysis workflow. So go join now by clicking the link in the description.